from FingerLakes1.com, this is the Inside the FLX podcast. I'm Josh Durso. I'm joined in studio today by Montezuma Audubon Center Director Chris Lejeski. Uh, Chris, it's been a few weeks, but we're here. Uh, it's fall. The mosquitoes are gone like we were just talking about before we came on. Uh, a lot going on this time of year uh, out at the center. Uh, is this your favorite time of year? Is this one of the better seasons to be out there and seeing everything sort of unfold? Fall and spring are two of the best times to be out at the Montezuma Wetlands Complex. The number of birds, the variety of birds that are migrating through uh, this time of year is unlike anything else that we have in the Northeast United States. So with the 50,000 acre Montezuma Wetlands Complex, the mosaic of habitats, uh, there's, there's well over 200 bird species on the move right now. Mm-hmm. and a really exciting time to be out there. And Montezuma Audubon Center is proud to offer many uh, programs, driving tours, hiking tours coming up. Uh, we're kind of done with the canoeing and kayaking for the year, but uh, it's a great time to visit. And with 30 miles of hiking trails, uh, there's just countless opportunities for people to explore the area. And lots of events that have already occurred, one of which is the, the muck race or a muck race, uh, talk to us a little bit about what that was all about and, and why it was such a success this year. Yeah, the 24th annual Montezuma Muck Race was a huge success uh, for us at the Montezuma Wetlands Complex. The Muck Race is a 24-hour birdathon competition, and it was great to be back at it this year after taking last year off because of everything that was going on with COVID. And so back on September 10th and 11th, we had 35 birding teams fan out across the entire wetlands complex. There were well over 130 participants. And we found, together, we found a record number of bird species, 192 bird species. Wow. Incredible number of birds. And, and these birders came in from all over New York State and actually beyond. We had some out-of-state birders participate as well. Uh, so it's a fun event. Uh, but really, one of the big parts of the of the muck race is to raise funds for the friends of the Montezuma Wetlands Complex through sponsorships, team donations, uh, t-shirt and hat sales, and really proud of the fact that we have raised well over $9,500 for bird conservation projects, environmental education programs, and public access projects, which will enhance visitors' experiences at Montezuma. Um, the Montezuma Audubon Center hosted the event. Um, we were the, the destination where people could come, use the facilities. Uh, they turned in their checklists at the end of the event. Um, we provided some, uh, some snacks as well as the shirts and hats for all participants. Great event and looking forward to the 25th anniversary next year. Yeah. When it comes to events like that, um, is there still an element of obviously done it 24 times, going to be doing it a 25th time next year, of course. Uh, is there an element of, you know, not really knowing what you're going to get out of that in terms of what, you know, is going to be seen, what's going to be mm. spotted? It all kind of probably d- depends on the year. Right. How how does that help sort of keep everything interesting in terms of, you know, no one really knowing what, what's going to come out of that? Well, that's exactly why it's such a successful event and why participants and teams stay engaged with the Montezuma Muck Race year after year. There is one gentleman who has participated in each and every one of the Montezuma Muck Race and and many that have participated in 20 or more. Um, Me and and my family have participated in almost 10 of them. So uh, it's, it's the camaraderie, it's the friendships that we have developed and the unknown what are we going to see out there during this 24-hour period in mid-September yeah. when we're at the peak of the songbird migration and the waterfowl are starting to move through, the shorebirds are moving through as well. This year, we had some great highlights. Roseate spoonbill, which yeah. I talked about, I believe, last time with you here. That's a bird that should be down in Florida, and that was still in the Montezuma Wetlands Complex a couple of weeks ago. Now it has uh, since uh, probably found its way back home. Yeah. We haven't seen it in the last week or so. But uh, back in mid-September, we still had it, which was a highlight for many of the bird watchers. Another one that comes to my mind, because my family and I saw it, it was a peregrine falcon was flying right around sunset at the Shockey Pool of the Montezuma National Wildlife Refuge. And it swooped down and took a 
a smaller bird. You couldn't tell what exactly it was, a songbird or maybe a, a small duck, right out of the air. Wow. And then flew right over our heads with it. Wow. <laughs> it's just, yeah, wow. Really cool. And you just never know what you're going to see out there. Uh, and, of course, uh, you guys are always, it seems like there's always some educational programs happening out there. Uh, waterfowl hunter education course uh, one was held earlier this month talk to us a little bit about that this past saturday we hosted a youth waterfowl hunter education course for 15 youth these are children ages 12 to 15 and uh, they're adult mentors who are going to be guiding them through this this hunting process um, and it was part of the 14th annual robert f Duro memorial uh, youth sportsman and sportswoman initiative that we have at the Montezuma Audubon Center. Really proud of this event that we've been doing since the Audubon Center opened back in 2007. Now this this course that the youth took is a required course in order to hunt waterfowl at the Montezuma National Wildlife Refuge and some of the state lands here in New York, but it is not required for um, private lands. So uh, these youth came, and they, I'm really happy, they all passed the course with the help of the New York State DEC officers that led this course. And after the course, we had a dinner outside uh, the Audubon Center underneath a couple of tents uh, Saturday night, beautiful evening. Mosquitoes weren't too ferocious. <laughs> and, um, and we had a couple of volunteers come in and lead demonstrations for the youth and the mentors. We had a waterfowl caller and a dog retrieving demonstration as well. So beautiful labs that came in and did that retrieving demonstration in, on the lawn as well as in the pond right behind the Audubon Center. So youth got to see dogs work and learn what it takes to train a dog oh, yeah. to become a, a waterfowl retriever. Um, so really happy with that. And now all of these youth that participated and some others are going to be participating in two hunts coming up here the next couple of weeks. So October 2nd, we've got our youth waterfowl hunt that's coming up this Saturday. And uh, we've got guides for all the youth. They're going to be leading them into the, the wetlands around Montezuma. Some are going to go into private land or on state land. Um, and they're going to be hunting um, ducks and, and geese throughout Montezuma. We have another hunt coming up on October 9th. That's the pheasant hunt. That's going to take place right at the Audubon Center, the one day out of the year when hunting is allowed at the Audubon Center. And that's just for this youth pheasant hunt where we put birds, uh, pheasants, out on the property uh, for the youth to harvest. Um, and it's, it's part of conservation, really. Mm -hmm. People look at me and question how Audubon could get involved in hunting. Well, for bird conservation, habitat conservation, we have quite a tool belt, yeah. and, and hunting is one of those tools that we have. Invasive species management is, is one. Uh, bird and other wildlife surveys is another tool that we have, but hunting is another tool that we use. And the species that I always highlight when I talk about hunting and conservation are the white-tailed deer and the resident Canada geese. Mm -hmm. Those are two species that are out of balance with the rest of our wildlife and our habitats here at Montezuma and across New York State. Yeah. And one way that we bring them back into balance with the rest of the habitat is through uh, hunting mm -hmm. opportunities. So really proud of this effort that we've been doing now for 14 years. Yeah. And, and you and I have had that conversation before here on the show is, is it's anything but random what's happening at the wetlands complex. Um, how good does it make you feel to see uh, when you have these programs, especially when, when they're for young people, to see good turnout, to see strong support, and, and then to see a good solid response afterward from it in mm -hmm. terms of knowing that you know conservation and and some of the things that you guys are, are teaching and, and trying to instill are going to be able to last and are going to be carried forward many of the participants are younger siblings uh, who have participated in this annual event uh, before yeah. so that is i think a testament to uh, the success and the high quality uh, of these programs that we offer. Uh, parents, uh, grandparents, aunts, uncles, uh, our th moms are, are all excited about this. And um, they understand that the, the role that hunters play in conservation. So we filled up all three of our components of this annual event this year, really excited about that. 
And, you know, it, again, it, I always turn back to bird conservation. Audubon is a science, conservation, educational uh, policy organization. And so we don't do anything just because it's fun. We do it because we are a, a you know, leading bird conservation organization. Hunting is a part of uh, conservation. And white-tailed deer, for example, white-tailed deer are eating <laughs> our forests yep. uh, away. Um, they, they love to eat the seedlings. These are little trees starting off foot, two feet tall, but eventually they will reach the canopy in a forest. And that yeah. is where warblers, vireos, ruby-throated hummingbirds, Baltimore orioles nest. And so um, by having more deer, we have fewer uh, trees growing in the forest. They're less, uh, less healthy uh, for us, and we need to bring white-tailed deer population back down into balance with the rest of the habitat. What's your message to, and it's something that I've been thinking about uh, lately, you mentioned uh, obviously a lot of younger siblings of, of kids who have participated in programs in the past. What do you say to parents who maybe don't really have any experience with wildlife or birding or the outdoors, or, or maybe it isn't sort of in their uh, activity list of things they do with their families? What is your message to those uh if, those families who, who maybe want their kids to get more engaged, um, how can they use the, the Audubon Center as sort of that platform to, to help, you know, go in that direction and maybe get a little more uh, outdoorsy in the process? The Montezuma Audubon Center is a year-round nature center, and we are always providing families, adults, and youth with opportunities to get involved in bird conservation projects. Um, or, or enjoy birding tours, experience this 50,000-acre Montezuma wetlands complex. From the birding walks that we have led and will be leading this fall, driving tours with family and friends, great ways to explore Montezuma, uh, canoeing, kayaking in the summertime, snowshoeing in the winter, uh, and, and then the, the habitat restoration work that goes on. There is something for everyone at the Montezuma Audubon Center. Uh, so I would encourage people to go to our website, montezuma.audubon.org. Great way to see all the different programs and events that we have going on. Uh, come visit us at the Audubon Center. That's a great way to meet me and the staff and our volunteers that are instrumental in having this facility open year-round, Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 4. Um, we do have two miles of trails, 200 acres right on the property, so yeah. people can come uh, outside of our business hours even and enjoy the trails on their own, explore all the forests, wetlands, and grassland, and the birds and all the wildlife that are there. And, and to that end, uh, birding tours. There are some coming up. Mm. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, we're going to be offering a variety of birding tours, not just this week, but uh, just about every week through the fall season. So the next birding tour is this Thursday, September 30th at 3 p.m. And uh, we're going to be highlighting uh, three or four different areas within the Montezuma wetlands complex and the birds that are migrating through right now. It's a great way to experience some areas that are off the beaten trail. Um, these are areas both down at the Montezuma National Wildlife Refuge as well as up on the New York State DEC areas in Savannah. The way these uh, uh, programs work is everyone is going to be driving their own vehicle and following the Audubon Center van and we'll give everyone the Zoom conference call number so they can dial in and hear the Audubon educator narrate the tour uh, and folks can ask questions in between the stops that we'll make where everyone gets out of the vehicles and birds together. We do have binoculars uh, to loan out if anyone has um, a need for those. And um, just a great way to explore Montezuma to see the songbirds, the waterfowl, the shorebirds, and birds of prey that are migrating through right now. I was going to say, in October, um, Halloween, people start to think about uh, owls, one of the one of the, the birds, I guess, that gets lumped in with, with that holiday yeah. pretty regularly. A um, couple of those events coming up, too, at the end of October, correct? We're, we're offering a lot of in-person outdoor experiences yeah. here this fall, the, yeah. the birding tours, driving tours, as well as some hikes that I'll mention here in just a little bit. But we're also getting back into some virtual programming. Um, 
we, we typically, when we're not in a pandemic, we, we typically invite dozens to well over 100 people inside the Audubon Center for programs like Owl Pellet Dissection and uh, Happy Owlween. We just feel like that we're just not ready to invite all those people uh, into a fairly confined area yep. in a, at this point. So we are offering these virtual programs. And both of them that I want to highlight here now are, are going to be on Saturday, October 30th. First one is an owl pellet dissection. Now, owl pellets are what uh, owls will regurgitate. Uh, they can't digest all of a mouse or a meadow vole or a shrew. So there are some components of those small mammals that um, need to get regurgitated. And so those are the, the fur and the, and the bones of these small critters. And there's a lot that we can learn mm -hmm. about the owl. We can learn about... Uh, based on those those pellets, we can learn about where they hunt. We can learn about uh, the species of owls uh, that are out there in the forest and grassland and marsh habitats. Um, now, good thing about this is uh, you don't have to have your own owl pellet. <laughs> we will provide all participants with an owl pellet dissection kit. Okay. Uh, we will either mail them to the participants or folks can stop up at the Audubon Center and pick them up in preparation for the Zoom, right. which will take place again on October 30th at 11 a.m. So a great family event here just in time for Halloween. And then later on that day, October 30th at 2 p.m., we're having our annual Happy Halloween event where people will learn more in-depth about our resident owls here in the Finger Lakes region. Um, and they will also get to meet, virtually, uh, some live owls, see them in action. So really happy about that. Uh, there is all online reservations for all of our programs. People can go to montezuma.audubon.org, click on Programs and Events to get to those registration pages. Guided walks. Uh, the last two times you've been in, we've talked about how uh, horrendously humid and hot it had been. Mm -hmm. Uh, those days are gone. 50s and 60s, probably the best case scenario moving forward. Perfect conditions to get out and do some walking. Lots of opportunities there over the next few months, correct? We've been uh, enjoying some cooler temperatures, and those cooler mornings have helped keep the mosquitoes at bay. Um, so it's, it's much more of a pleasant experience out there right now. And the Montezuma Audubon Center is really proud to partner once again here with New York Canal Corporation. You probably remember back in the summer when we did all those guided kayaking trips on the Clyde River and the Erie Canal. Well, those were such a huge success that we've decided to partner once again with Canal Corporation through these guided birding walks at the Montezuma Audubon Center. Um, as I mentioned before, this is the, the one area where hunting is not permitted within the state lands of the Montezuma wetlands complex so people can feel safe and secure that there won't be any hunters um, on the property. And every Saturday from October 23rd through December 18th, both at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., we will offer these guided walks about a mile or so in length through forests, grassland, and wetlands, highlight how Montezuma is managed and also highlight the fall migratory birds that are coming through at that time. We do have limited space available for each of these guided walks and we're finalizing the details right now with Canal Corporation so the online reservations will be on our website here very soon but I wanted to to announce that today that we are uh, expanding our partnership with Canal Corporation uh, through these exciting guided walks this fall. Very cool and exciting stuff of course uh, it doesn't need to be a guided walk to get out to uh, the Wetlands Complex or the Audubon Center uh, every day or most days during the week. Get out there and, and enjoy it, right? That's right. The Audubon Center is open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., but the trails are open daily from sunrise to sunset, and not only people can enjoy our two miles of trails at the Audubon Center, but there's 30 miles of trails, publicly accessible trails across the Montezuma Wetlands Complex for uh, families and, and friends to enjoy together. All right, Chris, thanks as always for the time. Appreciate always it. Always a pleasure. Thanks. All right, that's all the time we have for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the channel on YouTube as well as the show on any podcast platform. We will talk to you next week. Inside the Finger Lakes is a production of FingerLakesOne.com digital media.
The show is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you listen to shows like this one. It's hosted by me, Josh Durso, and if you want to hear archived episodes, visit InsideTheFLX.com. If you have an idea for a show, email it to josh at fingerlicks1.com or follow me on Twitter at FLXJosh, where we keep the conversation going all week long. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you back here next week.